Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about some big storms with major flooding and Hurricane Henri, plus a look at what may be coming after Henri. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media, all right? So let's get started. Let's first of all, take a look at the uh, the water vapor imagery uh, this morning for Saturday, August the 21st. What we got going on here, we had some big storms uh, overnight and that's continuing to push off uh, to the east. That one trough lifts up into Canada as we do have some additional moisture that's filtering down here to the southeast uh, this afternoon into parts of Oklahoma, into Arkansas, parts of Missouri, getting into uh, Tennessee, as well as uh, Mississippi and Alabama into Georgia here. We also have a second trough that's developing behind the first one that's adding some rain showers into Idaho and Montana, and that's going to be setting up a severe threat uh, for tomorrow as it continues moving off to the east. But we got a lot of dry air filtering in from the southwest, and we see Texas starting to dry out as we see Henri really get its act together out here into the Atlantic. And that's going to be a big impact event for coming up uh, for New England. So let's take a look at the overall hazard advisories uh, for this afternoon. We do have some flash flood watches still in effect for parts of uh, Washington and Idaho. But we've also got those heat advisors returning with that southwest flow and all this air is extremely uh, moist. And so those dew points are still really high out here. Combined with, the, combined with the higher temperatures now, we're back to heat advisories in parts of uh, North Texas, getting into Oklahoma, Arkansas, as well as Louisiana. Down here with those heat advisories, 105, 109 range. We've also got that flash flood watches in effect for parts of Jersey and New England with Henri coming aboard. And we've got hurricane uh, watches and warnings out here uh, hurricanes warnings now they've upgraded to hurricane warnings because it's within 24 hours possibly of coming ashore so we've got a lot to talk about so let's take a look at the temperatures today we had that cooler air that filtered in for much it actually brought the first snowfall of the season to parts of colorado way up in the other upper high elevations uh you know talking 10,000 plus uh feet up in the, in the atmosphere but man still we we still had the first snowfall of the season in Colorado the other day that cooler air is retreating back but we're still experiencing highs in the 60s in parts of uh, Idaho and Montana but man the the warmth comes back the heat returns summer returns how it was back with the heat advisories and back with the heat where it's supposed to be technically for this time of year down down to the south so let's take a look at the drought index and where we're set currently right now for the, for the U.S. And what's interesting, I put the map on here, basically where we are now and where we were just a year ago. And you can see really predominantly for as far as the exceptional drought, we really didn't have any exceptional drought to speak of. Uh, but right now it's about 9% and it's been holding about 9% uh, for the last several months and predominantly well out west. But most of the categories in the two, three, D4 range has been steadily kind of upticking as we've gone, gone throughout the year. So we've tr made dents in the drought at times, but still we're, we got a long ways to go with this drought way out west is predominantly a lot of these areas desperately need some rain. And unfortunately, there's just not much to speak of that I can really see in the foreseeable future. Uh, you can definitely see out here down to the south and much of the southeast there's pockets of sporadic abnormally drier drier conditions but for the most part uh, they're not really experiencing terribly too much drought so let's take a look at the overall map of where the rainfall is going to be for today so we've got that first initial tr uh, trough that's moving through right now so that's going to set some showers and thunderstorms in parts of northern oklahoma parts of uh, missouri here into arkansas getting into parts of uh, Illinois, into Tennessee, into northern uh, Mississippi, and into Alabama and Georgia, into the Carolinas. And there's Henri coming ashore, already spreading rain into uh, parts of New England, getting into the Northeast. And we've got that second trough that's gonna be digging in 
dumping some rain showers into Idaho, Montana, and to Wyoming as this will continue diving off into the southeast. And if we go to the next 48 hours combined, so for the next two days, uh, that same trough just you know digs a little bit further in. So now more precipitation would fall into North, North Dakota, into South Dakota, as just the higher rain amounts start to add up as Andre will be ashore by then, by Monday, dumping some extremely uh, flooding rains uh, for that region. So as that second trough digs in, as we go into Sunday, yes, yeah, some of these storms could start to turn strong to severe. So those areas in Omaha, Nebraska, into Lincoln, and to Sioux Falls, and to Sioux City, all those areas will be under the gun to seeing some of those strong to severe thunderstorms. And some of these storms out here could be uh, marginally severe, but we always have to look for a tornado risk, unfortunately, when on land falling uh, tropical systems. So yes, tornadoes are not out of the question. As we saw with Fred coming ashore, we had numerous uh, tornadoes activated with that tropical system, as well as that's gonna be a threat with Henri Unfortunately, as it's going to be coming ashore uh, on the day on Sunday and going into Monday, we're going to have to be dealing with some of those uh, uh, tornadoes are going to be spinning up uh, in that region. So let's take a look at Henri. It's officially upgraded to a hurricane now as the latest advisory as of 11 a.m. It's moving north northeast at 14 miles an hour. So it has picked up in speed. The, the shear has come down. It's starting to relax. So we still got a good 24 hours uh, on time to make a landfall. The official track takes it all the way up to an 85 mile per hour hurricane and then comes ashore sometime around noon, say two o'clock tomorrow, right around uh, in around L Long Island area. But the noticeable thing about Henri, it starts to really slow down as it goes inland. So this is this is 8 p.m. on Sunday and this is 8 p.m. on Monday. See, it really doesn't travel that far. So that's on top of the wind with extremely heavy flooding is going to be a, a main threat with this particular landfalling system. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture and you can definitely see from this visible visible satellite the shear is really starting to come down here we got a lot of warm waters to uh, work with in this uh, storm so it's just now getting into uh, hurricane intensity but look I mean the bands are really starting to wrap around and this could actually be even a, a bigger storm than what the National Hurricane Center is implying currently right now because it's got a lot of room to work with. You saw what happened with Grace last night. It more or less bottomed out and hit peak intensity, literally coming ashore. It actually made landfall as a major hurricane, 125 mile per hour major hurricane so it rapidly bombed down and a lot of these storms have a tendency to really rapidly strengthen in, into the overnight hours so that is the concern with Henri that it would could potentially rapidly deepen at, into tonight and we could be looking at a formidable storm uh even even a cat 2 storm by the time we wake up uh tomorrow morning uh, you know, heading towards the coast. I mean, then it would be like six hours away from making landfall. So that is definitely a concern. So let's go look at all the concerns. I mean, check out these maximum wave heights offshore. We're talking upwards to 49 foot waves coming off offshore. So this storm is really going to be packing a punch. Not only that, but it's going to supposed to curve back into the uh, into the uh, northwest here and look at the wind direction as these winds would dump some of that driving higher waves closer, you know, closer to shore. So we've got those, you know, 40, 50 foot waves potentially out, out way offshore, but the wind direction is going to be pushing all that water towards the coast. So that is definitely a concern on top of this of storm surge that they're going to be getting uh, with this with uh, on Henri with two to four feet is yeah not out of the question and some of these could be conservative depending on how much Henri really Henri really strengthens into the overnight hours tonight so that's definitely my concern we could be looking at about a 20 millibar a drop down to about a 90 970 hurricane by the time we wake up. Uh, tomorrow morning so that it's definitely not out of the question and the stronger Henri is able to get the, the you know the less of her time it's going to be able to weaken as it comes ashore 
So yes, it is expecting to weaken, but if it if it you know it was able to elevate to a, a, a pretty you know strong category two hurricane, then it would have a less likelihood and have a more probability of hitting a, as a hurricane on top of the the waves and the storm surge, and then of course inland flooding is going to be a huge threat with this system. So you got three to five foot storm surge all the way out to Nantucket, uh, getting out here into, into uh, Cape Cod. So this is a huge area all the way down here into uh, uh, Jersey with even one to three feet as those wind direction would push all this water uh, inland on top of the rain. So here's here's the wind direction. So as this is coming ashore, this even the latest uh, GFS guidance has it at 978 by about, by, by about midnight tonight. And it's a it's a 991 right now, guys. Okay, so this could really start to rapidly deepen. But look, look at the wind direction of these arrows pushing all that water because it's it's gonna be making that hook shape. So this is a kind of a unique direction for a tropical system to come in at. Um, it kind of came, you know, that's kind of like what happened with Sandy. So this is almost like a Sandy type feature that came in a little bit further off here into Jersey. This one's supposed to come up a little bit further north, but still have huge impacts uh, inland. So let's take a look at the overall uh, flooding rains. And right now, uh, the Weather Prediction Center has a moderate risk. And I would not be surprised. <clears throat> I would not be surprised that they get upgraded to a high risk uh, with this system. Cause man, we're talking extensive heavy rainfall with it slowing down as it gets towards the coast. So, and this is an area that has already got a lot of rain, right? I mean, no question. If you guys live up there, you know, you've been getting a lot of rain over the last month or two. So the watt, the ground is really saturated. So you're talking adding multi-inch rains, if not double digit rains on top of that, yeah, we could be looking at a serious flood threat into New York, uh, in, into New York City, into Hartford, into Albany, even into Philly, going back into D.C. All these areas will be under the gun for that excessive heavy rainfall. And because of the slow movement, I mean, look at look at where the rainfall and the heavier rainfall will be. I mean, even by Tuesday morning, you're still under a marginal risk in, into uh, uh, New York City, and it comes in about noontime on Sunday. So you're talking about a 36-hour period. You're going to be inundated with some very heavy rain on top of those higher winds and tropical storm force winds. Yes, it'll be downgraded to a tropical storm, if not a depression, by the time we get into uh, Tuesday, but still all that wind will be all that wind and the heavy rain will be circulating around uh new england uh for about 36 hours upwards to 48 hours and that is going to be the huge concern we're talking extensive power outages in the area a lot of trees down so definitely be prepared to have an extended stay without electricity for for a, you know probably up to a week i mean that's just not out of the question with this a landfalling system uh, like this and some of the guidance, I mean, it's hard to depict um, where the intensity of the rainfall is going to be because as this comes ashore, it's got to be able to start to slow down. It kind of does a little loop and then it comes back out. So where that actually plays out and where it's going to fall is is yet to be seen. But these some of these totals could easily be double digits uh, into the interior regions of anywhere into the New England state. So you're definitely under the gun for a major event and uh, serious uh, flash flooding. And so flooding is a huge concern uh, in this area. So what may be coming uh, beyond Henri? So well, let's take a look at some of the guidance because we're going into peak hurricane season. There's no question, a peak hurricane season, right? September 10th, that's typically when you see you know, or, you know, 60% of your most, you know, active season. Here's the latest uh, European guidance. This is your 15 day anomalies. And it's starting to show up. Yes, Texas is dry right now, no question. But, and the extended, as we go towards the end of the month, and as we get into that first couple of days, first couple of days of September, the latest guidance from the European model is definitely implying we could have an extended uh, you know, well above average uh, uh, precipitation anomalies into Louisiana and getting into Texas. And that's implying that we could see some sort of tropical development 
coming out of the Gulf. So if we take a look at the latest uh, MJO, which is your man and Julie oscillation, we just came out of phase two and normally this continues on, but it's starting to meander. It just meanders itself and we, we're going into phase one. So we're still in pretty uh, predominantly favored phases. But what happens here is we actually go back into favorable phase two again by the time we get into the end of the month and go into those first couple of days of September. All that basically means in layman's terms is it's going into a very active uh, tropical type setup with a lot of enhanced uh, upward rising motion air. So phase two is your most prime development and if we look at some of the spaghetti models of the latest uh, gfs guidance and some of the ensemble members it's starting to hint at around that 30th time frame we could be looking at a formidable storm in the gulf of mexico trying to start getting closer into the texas region as well as uh, louisiana so these areas look to be a little bit more susceptible of some of the highest threat of our next tropical system so if we zoom out and look at all the ensemble members from the latest uh, EPS guidance, yes, it's definitely implying a lot of members are taking a tropical system into Texas, into Louisiana sometime around you know the end of August, that first couple of days of September timeframe. The MJO is gonna be in a very favorable phase. And we already talked about yesterday, there was a Kelvin wave that's forming right out, way out in Australia right now, but it's going to be moving eastward over time. And it lines up to hit the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, right around that end of, you know, end of August, beginning of September time frame. And that just adds on top of the favorable phase of MJ, you know, the MJO2 and the Kelvin wave. That's basically just deep tropical moisture that's going to be hitting an upward rising motion air mass and yes that's why a lot of these ensemble member guidance are showing a very active time frame in the gulf of mexico and yeah if you extend it to the gfs ensembles it even has more members more taking it into louisiana more taking it into texas right around that end of august beginning of september time frame so that's definitely a concern after Andre that we may be looking at to the Gulf of Mexico for our next tropical threat uh, to impact possibly Texas and or Louisiana. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.